Welcome to Municipal Affairs. I'm your host, Christopher Brown. Now, in today's episode, we are shining a spotlight on the urgent call issued by the Federation of Canadian Municipalities to the federal government. This call comes weeks before Deputy Prime Minister Christia Freeland tables the federal budget on April 16th. Now, earlier this week, FCM President Scott Pierce was at the most recent Rural Municipalities of Alberta conference in Edmonton, and he spoke with delegates about the pressing issues facing municipalities. Now, here is his speech from that conference. Now, for those who are watching this via YouTube, please note that we were unable to record video from the conference, so this speech will be audio only. Uh, good morning, everyone. I hope you all got some sleep. I know you were working hard last night discussing the municipal file. I saw many of you in, in my, during my evening. Um, I'm uh, a bit of a unicorn. I'm, I'm an English mayor from Quebec. It's almost like being a liberal MP in Alberta. <laughs> I started years ago at FCM. I'm from a rural municipality. We, I think we probably have more deer than people in my community. And um, I remember back in the day at FCM, my first days, I thought, I don't know what I'm doing here. All they do is talk about the big cities. And thanks to some guys that are here today, Al Camry, I don't know where Al is. Are you here, Al? Usually I can see you, you're about six foot ten. And Lauren Olsvik, um, two gentlemen I met early on uh, in my time at FCM, and together we made a team, kind of Alberta, Quebec, rural. And we've stuck together over the years, and now, as I'm president of FCM, the rural file gets as much, if not more, attention than the big city mayor file. I want to obviously thank your FCM members, um, Tanin Rudick, past president, Robin, who I can never pronounce his last name, Kerpa White. Did I get it right that time? Good for me. Slow, man. Uh, there's Robert, Katie. And your RMA team here is absolutely fantastic. In all honesty, um, Kara and Robin, uh, sorry, Neil, John, Jason, Kevin, I'll probably forget some, but for me, it's an absolute honor to work with them at FCM. It really is. They, they are true leaders. And I think I'll be heading back to Quebec today, so I can tell you honestly that you're very lucky to have this group of leaders representing your rural municipalities across Alberta. I'd like you to give them a hand, please. Um, now, FCM, I know from, from my Alberta friends at times feel FCM, we don't go strong enough or hard enough against the federal government, but I guess I'm a bit of a pit bull because that's changed over recent months since I've been there. And uh, I know staff were a little nervous sometimes of what I was about to say in public. But the good news is, we did a press conference a, a few weeks ago, Mayor Mike Savage from Halifax and myself. And at that point, the federal government wasn't talking about infrastructure money. There was nothing signed for the gas tax, which is now the Canadian Community Building Fund. Nothing for infrastructure. So we went to town a bit in Ottawa in front of the national media. And the federal budget was supposed to come out in mid-March, and now they've delayed till mid-April. So I think we might have hit something there. And they're going to see that uh, municipalities will not stand for stagnation. You know, the federal leaders talk about housing. It's really cool to build houses, but it's even better when the toilets flush. So without infrastructure money for municipalities, that 5.8 million houses that CHMC is saying we need in this country will not happen. The Canadian Community's Building Fund, to me, in a small town like mine and most of yours, that's gold for our municipalities. Because a lot of times when the federal government, even their provincial governments, come out with these big programs and they, they like to announce millions and hundreds of millions and billions of dollars, a lot of our municipalities don't have architects and engineers on staff. So you have to go get someone externally and you've got to pay money to have them build a project. I'm in the process now. I need a new town hall. My population's increased 20% since COVID. And what tends to happen is you've got to risk that money. You're taking taxpayers' money, you're paying an outside source to build a project, and if you don't get the grant, then that money's lost. It's hard to explain to your, your people in your community how you just spent 500000 and you didn't get anything back for it. So a lot of times, small towns, they don't actually try to get forward on these issues because it's risky. The Canadian Community Building Fund is money that comes directly into our municipalities, and we know what to do with it. 
I don't need a bureaucrat from Quebec City or Ottawa telling me what I need in my community and what my people want in my community. I know that myself, as you will do, because you're the experts on the ground. The other thing that we're fighting for is the municipal growth framework. It sounds complicated, but at the end of the day, as the population grows, it creates more tax revenue for the provinces, more tax revenue for the federal government. But for municipalities, all it does is cost us more. Because as our population grows, you need parks, you need recreation, you need community centers. So what the FCM is fighting for is a way that as the economy grows across the country, so will revenues for municipalities because we can't just tax people over and over again. My community, I don't even have a corner store. I have about, in the summertime, 5,000 residents. We don't even have a Tim Hortons. Now that's really rural. I, I always said that FCM, that should be the, the starting point to be a, muni a rural municipality. If you don't have a Tim Hortons, you get top shelf clearance right there. I, I gotta drive 20 minutes for a double-double. Um, I want to take a minute, and I'm not going to be long. I know you guys have more important people than me to listen to, but truly, from the bottom of my heart, I've absolutely loved working with your president, Paul. He is a true Canadian leader. I can't tell you how proud I am that the time I've gotten to work with him, and I'm so happy that he's only leaving in November, so I still get you for a few months, and... As you like to say, your wife is a very lucky woman to have married you, and I'm a very lucky president to have you on my side over the past years, Paul. Thank you so much for everything you've done in this country. You know, I, I say it often, the federal government has all the money, the provinces have all the power, and the municipalities, we have all the problems. But I don't want to offend anybody. But if you ask me who the true Canadian leaders are, it's you. Because you do it on the ground every day. You're not in the media. You're not making hundreds of thousands of dollars. You don't have bodyguards or limousines. But you work hard every day to improve the quality of life for the people in your community. And that makes me so proud just to be one of you. Thank you for everything you do. And you are the most important order of government, and I can prove it. When Justin Trudeau prorogues parliament in Ottawa for three months, do you really notice that? When your provincial government shuts down for two months in the summer, what's the impact on you? But close down your town hall for two or three days and don't clear the hockey rink and don't cut the grass in the soccer field and people know that you're not there. That's leadership. The last thing I want to mention to you is one of the things that I've started as president, which was important to me, if you go on the FCM website, there's a program called Trailblazer. And for me, it was important because I do believe you are the most competent order of government. And Trailblazer, if you go on the website, it's uh, Trailblazer slash something. And what it is, it's a way to talk about municipal leaders that go above and beyond the call of duty every day. So if you work with someone and you know how dedicated they are and all the good things they do, you can put their name in and then we publicize how important these people are and the great job they do and it's all over Twitter, it's all over Facebook. And I think it's a way to show municipal people how important you are and for you to show your colleagues how much you appreciate the, their work. So if you get a chance, just look it up online at the FCM website and maybe speak highly of someone you work with. Give them a little bit of push, a little bit of energy. Let them know they're appreciated. Thank you so much, everybody. I love my time here in Alberta. I'm sad to be going back home, and uh, hopefully I'll be back soon. Paul, thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. With historic crises looming in housing, affordability, homelessness, and climate change, the FCM is rallying for critical infrastructure investment across this nation. Now, at a press conference in Ottawa in February, FCM President Scott Pierce, alongside Halifax Mayor Mike Savage, emphasized that there has been swift action taken by municipalities to address the housing challenges. From expediting permit approvals to implementing innovative zoning solutions, municipalities are racing against time to bolster housing construction. 
However, despite these efforts, municipalities shoulder the responsibility of maintaining vital infrastructure with limited financial resources, collecting only a fraction of every tax dollar. FCM is calling for modernization of federal investment, urging Budget 2024 to prioritize infrastructure essential for nurturing complete communities. Now, after his speech at the RMA conference, we spoke with Pierce on a range of issues facing municipalities in, in Canada and his hopes for Budget 2024. Again, for those who are watching this via YouTube, this is an audio-only interview. President Pierce, thank you so much for doing this. I want to start by asking you about what took place in Prince George recently. FCM had their annual spring conference or convention where they got together. How'd that go? Oh, it's always good. Um, municipal leaders from across the country uh, always working together. Um, you know, the things like the federal budget are coming out and uh, we're concerned. We haven't seen an infrastructure plan. Uh, the Canadian Communities Building Fund, there's nothing clear on that. And uh, the municipal growth framework that we're looking at, um, as the country grows in population, it creates more tax revenue for the federal government and the provincial government, but for the municipalities, it costs money to supply services. So we're looking at a new model. It's the same model since 1867. I think it's time the federal government and the provincial government sit down with municipalities and find a way forward to working as a team. So some of the key issues that uh, FCM has been advocating for is around infrastructure, around yep. more mental health uh, supports, around more just overall infrastructure, socially and even physically. Um, I want to start talking about some of the housing needs. Mm -hmm. FCM recently did a survey and it said that uh, the average house costs $107,000 uh, to build infrastructure to. Now, I've spoken to a lot of smaller rural municipal leaders. You are a smaller rural municipal leader. How does that number transpose into smaller communities like yours, like these rural communities that are here at RMA tonight? Yeah, the work that was done was based on an average. It's a national average. So it's small rural, big cities. It's, it's different everywhere. It's not a one-size-fits-all uh, file. But the overall average is about $107,000 per, per housing unit. And that's where we have a problem because the CHMFC is saying that we need 5.8 million houses by 2030. And the government has not come out with an infrastructure plan. So I always say it's nice to build houses. It's even better when the toilet's flush. So without that infrastructure money coming from the federal government, it's going to be a total failure. There's no way we can build $5.8 million, million houses without sewer systems and, and water. And then around that, you know, we don't build houses. Mayors don't build houses. Mayors build communities. So you have some new housing units. You, you know, you need a fire station. You need a park for the kids to play in hockey rinks, baseball, all that, it, it, it's all part of the infrastructure to provide Canadians with a quality of life that they deserve. I was recently speaking to Robin Jones, the mayor of Westport, Ontario, president of, of the Rural Ontario Municipalities Association. There's too many acronyms to remember. <laughs> and she was talking about one of the key things that she's noticed in the small rural communities is the more need for social infrastructure help because she's dealing a lot with mental health and addictions and homelessness in smaller communities. Are you hearing that across uh, Canada as well when you speak to more rural leaders? Absolutely. And um, I think... Part of the problem is obviously um, the economy, interest rates. Um, people are struggling to get by, and that creates a lot of stress and a lot of pressure. We're seeing it even in rurals like myself. Um, we find people basically camping because they have nowhere to live, camping in the middle of the woods in, in my place. And it's not safe when it goes down to minus 30 and have a propane heater in a tent. So we're seeing the mental health aspect. Uh, to me, a lot of that is, is based on the economy. Uh, the lack of housing, the lack of uh, jobs that pay enough to, to meet the, the, the needs today with the inflation and the, the cost of living, how it rose so, so quickly. So yeah, we're seeing it all over. It's, 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 it's not a rural or a big city problem, it's a Canadian problem. What are you looking for exactly in this upcoming budget on April 16th? You talked about <laughs> infrastructure at the RMA convention here, but is there anything specific that you were going to be looking for, for a request that FCM has put in, that you have put in as a mayor? For me, the the, the big one, because it, it helps every municipality across the country, is the CCBF, the Canadian Communities Building Fund. It's $2.4 billion that's dispersed throughout the country, providing services and infrastructure to Canadians. We want to see that doubled. And so far, we haven't heard, they, we have no news. Um, so we're, we're concerned about it, but we've been speaking out about it. And, and uh, we're hoping the federal government will come to bat for Canadians. Because at the end of the day, this isn't money that goes to municipalities uh, so the mayor can drive a Cadillac. 
This is money that comes to municipalities to provide you know, roads and bridges and the basic infrastructures we need and to repair some of our existing infrastructure. Like my, for myself and my community, last year I used that money, or we used it as a community, to uh, fix the roof on a leaky fire station, uh, repaint and refurbish a community centre for the families. So these aren't luxury items. These are basic items that Canadians need in their, their hometowns. What happens if the federal government doesn't come to the table? Because it is a big hypothetical that a lot of municipalities are struggling with right now because they're applying for housing accelerator grants, they're not getting it, and they're looking for their last hope before they potentially move on. I'll let you take a sip here before we move on. What what happens if the federal government doesn't come to the table in this budget? Because this might be their last budget before the next election, but for you, is there a... Well, I think municipalities, mayors across the country have done everything we can do. Um, if they don't come to the table, that's their failure, not ours. And unfortunately, their failure will have a negative impact on the quality of life of Canadians. So that will be on them, not on us. We've done everything we can. We've proven over the years that investments into municipalities are wisely spent and respond to the needs of Canadians. If they still don't get that, you know, maybe they don't deserve to be in power anymore. Do you have hope? I do, I do. I've had some good conversations with some ministers. The fact that they delayed their budget for a month uh, after we did a press conference stating the obvious makes me think that they, uh, we woke them up to the concerns that Canadians are having. And so we'll see in mid-April, I think the budget's coming out and we'll see and I'm gonna keep knocking on doors until that time. I'm gonna cut it here for a second, but I'm gonna cut back in. I'm gonna ask you something and I apologize if it comes off out of left field. We're seeing a lot of mayors resign right now. We just saw Charlie Clark from Saskatoon resign. Your friend from Halifax, the mayor of the yeah. uh, Mike Savage, resigns. He is resigning. He's not standing for re-election. Um, are we seeing a transition here in municipal politics that FCM is looking at, or is this just a, the the average tenure of a municipal leader is usually ten to fifteen years, and they move on? Oh no, it's more important than that. It's it's tough out there. In Quebec, we've had. Uh, our elections were about two and a half years ago. We've already had 800 municipal people resign. Uh, the pressure is immense on municipal people because we don't have the funding we need. Uh, the model has not been changed since 1867. So while mayors want to get things done, they're, they're hamstrung sometimes by lack of finance. And when people are upset, when people are unhappy, they can't reach out to the prime minister. They can't reach out to the premier, but they know their mayor and they can call the mayor. Like in my community, every person has my cell phone. So. If they're unhappy, even if it's not my fault, even if I'm begging the government for, for fiscal help, their only outlet is me. So I see it happening and I see the pressure on mayors and, and councillors across the country. And I think that's part of what the federal government has to understand is we need that financing and the provincial government too. For me, it's about all three orders of government working together and finding solutions because we're the most accessible and that's why we're the ones who take the most heat. You are coming up to your tenure as president of FCM. Uh, you end your tenure in Calgary, Alberta. You're here yeah. in Alberta for your last time before you t uh, hand over the reins to Jeff Stewart, the deputy mayor from Colchester County. Um, looking back on the last year, has it been what you expected? Oh, it's been more. It's been more. The, the folks across the country are so kind to me, and uh, I love fighting on their behalf. To me, that's an honor. It's, uh, it's been an absolute honor. i got a couple months left to go, and I'm going to go and do what I can do as long as I can. And... I'm actually looking forward to the hand the reins over to Jeff Stewart because he's a class act and he's a, an honest, decent gentleman. So the leadership structure in FCM is going to be strong for years to come. We have some really good folks uh, year after year that get involved. And, you know, it, it's a volunteer basis. So these are people that care about what they do. They care about the community. So they, they show true leadership. Now, if today's episode sparked your interest, hit that subscribe button now. Stay in the loop with all our diverse content covering everything from municipal affairs to our in-depth conversations with municipal leaders of the cross-border interviews and even our eye-opening exploration of local governance in the political trenches, local government at work. Now, we are hopefully your go-to platform for comprehensive municipal coverage committed to keeping you well-informed and engaged on municipal issues. Your support is the backbone of our growth and the maintenance of this top-notch content you have come to enjoy. If you can, consider backing the show. Every contribution, big or small, goes a long way in amplifying the depth and the breadth of our programming. Find the support page link on the Cross Border Interviews website today. Until next time, stay informed. Stay engaged, and as always, and most importantly, just keep talking.